We love it. Let me make sure my microphone's on. Got all the cords up my ass. Got my water. <sighs> okay, can you see the cat mom? Amazing. Love it. Which hands am I going to hold it with? <laughs> oh. I got to make sure I plug this damn thing into the rat hole. Oh, I'm sorry, poopy girl. I did. I did. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Whew. It's always a struggle. Start of the episode. Gotta get situated. All right. Hi, guys. Welcome to, or welcome back to the Storytime Society. Um, as most of you know that have been here, for the past couple weeks since this show got started. I'm doing three episodes a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings at 8 a.m. EST. So be there, be square. Um, love you guys so much as always. I have, I think, some good stories. I'm not sure. I haven't read them, only read the titles so that I can react with you guys and get my full, full reaction. But as always, grab your drink, tea, coffee, water, a martini, dare I say, um, pop, so many things to choose from. Today I'm drinking water because as always, before I film this, I always drink so many lattes. So today this really had to be water for the sake of my health. In my little cat mom mug that my boyfriend got for me at Target. He always, whenever he goes to Target without me, he always gets me a cute little mug, which is very sweet of him. And we love him for that. I fear that everyone on TikTok thinks that I literally, my boyfriend sucks because, so I don't know if, I think I've said this once before, but... I don't know if any of you guys follow me on TikTok. I think I link it below in the description, I'm pretty sure. But I do first-person Reddit stories, so I just read it as it's written, and I do my makeup at the same time. And I put in the description, in the caption, the first thing I put is that it's a Reddit story, and then sometimes I even put it on the screen that it's a Reddit story, but people don't fucking pay attention, for real. I could write it on my forehead and nobody would know. They'd still comment as if it was my story, which I understand that I am saying it as if it's my story. But, like, just read one word and then maybe you would just know. But I've been telling so many stories. Like, my husband sent me a video of him screwing some girl at his bachelor party. So if I ever posted my boyfriend, like, I just know the comments would be crazy. Everyone would be like, is this the guy? Is this the guy that cheated on you with your sister? Like, it would be so funny. But anyways, let's get this party started. Or maybe let's get this bedtime sleepover party started. Someone actually commented the other day that they feel like we're having a sleepover. And I was like, we are. We are having a sleepover. Um, okay, I'm just approving all these posts. But I'm trying to figure out which one I want to do first. Hmm. Okay, let's do this one. Actually, yeah, let's do this one. I think this one might be a shorter one. We're going to start with a shorter one. We usually start with a long one, but we're going to start with a shorter one today. All right, so the title is My Boyfriend, 23 Male, is screenshotting bikini pictures of my sister, 20 female. How do I bring it up with him? Excuse me. 
My boyfriend, 23 male, and I, 23 female, have been together for almost five years. So we have spent a lot of time with each other's families, and last week I was going through his camera roll with his permission to help him dig up a profile photo for a new social account. Admittedly, further up than I should have scrolled, I did a double take on some pictures I recognized as screenshots from mine and my sister's 20 female Instagram stories. He had taken several screenshots of my sister's ass from photos of her in a bikini posted on line this happened while he was preoccupied with something else and i was too shook to say something in the moment so i just panicked and left it the more i think about it the more disgusted i am by it honestly this is coming completely out of nowhere and i'm so indescribably uncomfortable with it all i know that nothing has ever happened between the two of them my sister would absolutely never so i don't know if it comes down to him being attracted to the thought of something he can't have either way WTF. I feel like a major unspoken boundary has been crossed here. Regardless, what would you do in this situation? How can I bring this up without him feeling like I invaded his privacy beyond looking for that profile picture? Okay. And then the update says, got to clarify that we've always had a really great secure relationship and he's never shown any sort of weird or even flirty vibe towards another girl, let alone my sister. Mostly just looking for advice on how to tackle this as I'm super torn up and shocked by the whole thing. Please be a little gentle as I clearly still love this guy. Okay, first of all, don't the fact that she just says my sister would absolutely never is a little bit of a telltale sign because why didn't you say they would never? Like, they both would never do that. You just said your sister would never do that. So, do you trust him to not do that? I'm wondering. But I'm just confused as to why you wouldn't bring it up immediately. Like, the fact that you even would wait, I think I would just bring it up immediately and be like, excuse me, what the hell is this? Explain yourself. This is disgusting. And you should feel embarrassed. Also, I'm breaking up with you. Goodbye. Because what are the explanations that would make you feel any better about that situation? Like, I know that it's hard because when you love someone, you don't want to break up with him. And also, like, it's not like he cheated, blah, blah, blah. You always feel like you have to be like, it has to be something crazy that they do. But no. Just think about the future and if you would ever trust him again. Like, that's disgusting. He's almost, that's like perverted that's your sister like it's one thing if he had screenshots of some porn star or something you know like okay and whatever don't like that I don't really like that you have pictures of another girl's ass but at least it's not my sister like that's so perverted he's around your sister I assume that you guys hang out with your sister together so that's uncomfortable you're never going to feel uncomfortable with him around your family and what do you think he's doing with these photos I'm sure he is probably tugging on his meat, so maybe think about that, him in his room alone, doing that with your sister's photo and not yours. (laughs) The dignity is not dignity because that's actually crazy. Okay. Top comment. This was posted also, the whole story was posted five hours ago. Hi, little lady. Are you coming to join? Okay. We have a guest. Is there anything you'd like to say? Oh, my God. She's so soft-spoken. Okay. Anyways. The top comment says, I mean, do you really want to stay with someone who's jerking off to your sister? (laughs) Which is so true. And then the other comments on that comment say, yeah, I think this is what it comes down to. There's really no explanation needed. Be gentle. I still love this guy. I don't think OP really wants advice. I think she wants us to tell her this is something that can be fixed. It can't. He's a despicable creep. Taking photos of anyone without their knowledge for masturbation material is unacceptable. But your sister? And then OP commented, very valid point. I'm just shocked, I guess. And then these are the responses to her comment. Have some standards. 
cheese and rice why the f do people put up with this shit the whole point of dating is to find someone that values and respects the same things you do and you want to spend your life with them your boyfriend wants to f your sister unless you want to as well wake up he's known her since she was 15 it is effing weird your boyfriend obviously has some maturing to do before he is ready for a committed relationship. Also, I am not sure the type of person that engages in this type of behavior on a mobile device that has a high chance of being viewed by others isn't intelligent enough to be in a relationship. Yeah, for real. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, no. That rattled, rattled my cage, and it's not even my sister. <laughs> there is zero reason to have bikini pictures of your sister on his phone unless the most obvious explanation is true, and that is that he sees your sister as a sexual object to use for his own gratification in his alone time. Knowing that, can you ever really trust him again? Will you ever be able to forget about this? And I think you know the answer. Yeah, exactly. I think you do know the answer because you will never be able to trust him again. And that's really the biggest thing here. That's what are you going to be thinking about every time you guys hang out with your sister? Or even every time maybe you guys are intimate together? Like, I would be thinking about that. And that would be so uncomfortable to think about. But this comment actually really I love because this one that says, why do people put up with this shit? The whole point of dating is to find someone that values and respects the same thing you do and you want to spend your life with them. That's literally so true. And I feel like people forget that and they get lost in like the need or want of being with someone and like having like being in love and they just totally put that aside when the whole point of dating someone and being with someone is to add value to your life not to make your life worse more stressful or anything like you should be feeling respected valued you should be feeling better in a relationship than worse. And that, I'm sure, made you feel a lot worse. I doubt there's a update because it was posted five hours ago. <sighs> yeah, there's no update yet, but hopefully she breaks up with him. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. We're going to read this one. I think this is a longer one. My partner is jealous of my late husband. Trigger warnings, death of a loved one, emotional abuse and manipulation, verbal abuse, and gaslighting. My late husband and I dated for a while back in high school, then again on and off in a university and got married a few years later. In short, he was a wonderful man and our relationship was amazing. Words can't do it justice. He died three years ago. My current partner was a mutual friend of ours. He basically knows a lot about my past. We got in a relationship a year ago. In general, he is a good person. Other than the problem mentioned in the title, he is a sweet and caring, not only with me, but I speak in general. The thing is, whenever we get into an argument, he would bring up my late husband. And when we're having a discussion, he never misses a chance to start with comparisons. For example, if we're discussing something and he raises his voice, I would tell him there's no need, we're just talking. And that's when he would hit me with something like, yeah, now you don't like the way I talk. I bet you wouldn't have said the same thing to him. Or when we're arguing about something he would finish with, I'm sure it was never like this with him. When he moved in with me, I called him once by my husband's name. I don't remember doing it, but he was so sure that I apologized to him. He's the first man I ever got close to after what happened, and not gonna lie, I knew my late husband for years, and it wasn't easy for me to accept he's gone and adjust easy, so I might have. I know it was wrong, but I really didn't intend to call him intend to call him by his name he never let it slide though he still brings that incident up sometimes okay that's disgusting sir are you good sorry i have to plug my computer in quick <sighs> one day we passed by a nearby restaurant and he said it seems like a good place i said yeah it is i've been there a few times he instantly asked if it was with my husband i said yes then he started with how of course it's a good place for me and how we can't go there now because the only thing that would be in my mind is my husband i snapped at him and told him to stop this shit and never bring him up again he apologized but never stopped when we were still friends i was still wearing my wedding ring but took it off when we started dating 
One day, in out of nowhere, he asked me about the ring. I said, it's in my closet. A month ago, I noticed it wasn't there. I wonder if it disappeared before then, and I didn't notice until a month ago. I did ask him about it, but he said he has no idea. The thing is, it's only the two of us. We rarely ever have people over. When I get in an argument or when I'm around raised voices, my eyes well up with tears. Not I'm about to cry away, but it's noticeable enough. So when we argue about bringing him up and how... He should stop with comparisons. He would get frustrated and say that I'm still in love with him and I would never forget about him and how I'm about to cry thinking about him. What? My eyes literally be like that even when we're arguing about something else. Like I said, he's a good man in general. Girl, you don't have to keep justifying. He cares about his family and like a father and is like a father to his little brother. He's affectionate with me and sweet, but the way he keeps bringing up my late husband is annoying. I never gave him a reason and never bring him up. I'm thinking about breaking up with him, but I don't know how because I know he will blame it on me and his obsession with how I can't get over my late husband and used to forget used him to forget him. And at the same time, I don't know if this is a problem worth breaking up over. I know I'm it might seem selfish for deciding to end things because of this, but the constant reminder isn't doing me any good. What should I do? You should break up with him. What? Is he okay? Even if you were... Okay, first of all. You can still love your late husband. What is wrong with that? He's literally dead. Like, does he think he's going to come back as a ghost and you're going to cheat on him with the ghost of your husband? Like, why is he so threatened by the fact that, yeah... You still, that would be honestly messed up if you didn't love your husband anymore. Because he just died. It's not like you guys broke up and had like the most tumultuous breakup in the world. That's just crazy. You should probably, if my husband died, I would probably love him for the rest of my life. I'm assuming it would be just as if like my mom or my dad died. I would still love, it's not like in a couple years, oh yeah, don't love them anymore. They're dead. Like, is he okay? Does he have any empathy at all? If you're starting to cry about your husband that literally died, he should probably maybe give you a hug and be like, I'm so sorry. I know that must have been so hard to go through. And just because we're in a relationship doesn't mean that you should just totally forget about him. And maybe if this is a spot that you used to go to with your late husband all the time, we should go there and we should, you know, honor his memory together because he was also my friend not only is he your late husband but he was also my friend like this guy needs to get a grip how old is this man it doesn't say but he's pissing me off like you actually are not a good guy And you can stop trying to justify him being a good man because he's obviously not. It doesn't matter if he cares about his family and is like a father to his little brother. I don't care. He's not a good guy. Okay. Update, May 7th, 2024. We broke up. Things got more complicated. We didn't end things on good terms. I tried my best to explain to him how his actions affect our relationship, but he wouldn't understand. When I made it clear that I'm done, he then admitted to taking the ring and promised to give it back and suggested we start couples therapy. The way he talked, the moment he admitted that he took the ring, everything scared me, but I stood my ground and made it clear again that we're done. When we were just friends, he never acted this way. I mean, you wouldn't know this man is capable of such things. Also, he tried to blame me for it all, that I never saw things from his perspective, that it's hard to be with a woman y- who knows a lot about... What? What? I hate when people write the wrong thing. That it's hard to be with a woman you knows a lot about. I was married. What's wrong with that? He also said that it was hard for him to try and be better than my late husband because he saw the way he loves me and thought he would never be enough for me. You don't have to try and be better. Just be a good guy. Anyway, we broke up and he's taking his sweet time packing his things. He owns an apartment but still acting like he's getting being kicked to the street. We don't talk. He's staying in the guest room until he finished packing. And he still didn't give me the ring back. That's all. Thank you. You better get that ring back before he moves out is all I'm saying. And maybe he should go to therapy, not couples therapy. Okay, OP. This is like a cross post, so it says... 
OOP on the partner's behavior toward her late husband and if she's mad. And I guess she said, I'm not mad at him. I'm mad at the way he never let me move on with my life a little bit. He never missed an opportunity to bring up my late husband and start comparing. He even accuses me of thinking about my ex more than him. It's not your ex, though. I hate when people call him your ex. Like, he literally died. Ugh. I'm sad. I never really gave him a reason to. I just wanted a normal relationship where my partner respects me more than keeps bringing up my past just because. Actually, I am mad at him. To be honest, I can't get past the fact that he stole something from me just to punish me for whatever reason he believes. He didn't steal just for the sake of stealing. It's my ring from my late husband. Yeah, and I'd probably wear that ring on my on a necklace, honestly. And that would be completely fine. Because however you're grieving is okay. There's no certain way for you to grieve. Like, I'm just pissed. I hate people that act like just because your husband died, like, you're all of a sudden over them. No. That's not how it works. Okay, wait. Final update, May 10th, 2024. Like most of you advised me, I had my sister and her late husband come stay the night with me. My brother-in-law helped him the next day with packing. My ex literally had nothing left to pack, but brother-in-law helped him move his things out of the guest room. He also offered to help him move his stuff to his apartment. He refused and called his stepfather instead. He did give me my ring back by throwing it at my face after I threatened to report it as stolen. Yeah, I know. And called me every name you can think of, along with accusing me of jumping into bed with him right after my husband died. I didn't. I never really got close to anyone for two years. And he was the one who helped me get through it all. That's why I thought getting into a relationship with him when he initiated was the right thing to do. Anyway, I didn't let him get on my nerves at first, but when he said if he could see how much you've changed, I'm sure he would ride that motorcycle again just to get away from you. In parentheses, I lost my husband to an awful motorcycle accident. Both of us used to ride. I never did again after what happened. I lost it and threw my phone his way, which I'm not proud of now. It did hit his arm, but my sister grabbed me from behind to stop me from doing anything stupid. My brother-in-law kicked him out as politely as he could. Brother-in-law is a gym freak, and both my sister and I had to stop him from doing anything to avoid getting into unnecessary trouble. My sister is still with me. Her husband can't stay because my place is two hours away from his work. Cameras are already installed along with an alarm. I'm currently working on changing the locks. I'm also in the process of obtaining a restraining order against him. His words are still echoing in my head and made me realize I have to consider starting therapy. I really didn't grieve properly and thinking about it now I see how I avoided my emotions by denial. It was sudden and although everything happened I really gave my ex a reason to do this. I really never gave my ex a reason to do this. I really treated him with respect and honesty and it took me a while to realize I deserved the same. Thank you all for the advice and support. Okay someone I think the top comment was that guy is absolutely crazy, but yeah, you really shouldn't have jumped into a relationship within the first, within the very first two lines of your first post, I could tell how it was going to end. You're not over him, and quite frankly, you are very far from being ready for a relationship. And then OP commented back, you're right, it's just the way he was supportive and there for me that made me think getting a relationship with him was the right thing, but I know better now, and I will work on myself. I need to take a little sip of water. Okay. Well, I love that she's going to go to therapy and get help because that is what she needs to do. Um, okay, wait. This, the top comment on the cross post says narrator, or no, he's commenting on them saying in general, he is a good person. And then it says narrator, he was not in fact a good person. And then it says the way he was supported, supportive and there for me, made me think getting in a relationship with him was the right thing. And then they said about that predator behavior. And then someone commented back to that. I got to the end of only the third par paragraph in the first post and already was like, yikes. I got the feeling that he was probably already in love and obsessed with her while she was still married and swooped in once he saw his chance to trauma bond her. 
He acted more like a crazy stalker than a husband. Well, he wasn't a husband. I don't think they were married. Yep. Nice guy. Subclass friend of family. Reminds me of those one guys in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I would have to Google his name. Who was always around Sharon Tate. That's interesting. I thought he was obsessed with the ex. I felt he liked the idea of being in a relationship with OP, but didn't really like OP. In my opinion, it seems like he wanted to be a better version of the ex without her validation. His dreams never came true. Yeah, it seems like maybe he was super competitive and like always felt like this guy was better than him when he was alive and just wanted to like be prove that he was better than him. I don't know if that makes sense. Okay. Next story is I, 30 female, found out about my husband, 32 male, found out that my husband, 32 male, hired my friend, 26 female, to strip at his bachelor party. Four years ago, I got married to my husband after dating for six years, so 10 years total now. My friend, Rebecca, has stripped since she was 21. She stopped last year after getting married and is going to be a stay-at-home mom when her baby is born. Since our children were very close and were basically neighbors, she lives at the bottom of the road we live on. Last week, one of my husband's friends visited at the same time as Rebecca as I had made plans to shop with her. I forgot to cancel and she showed up. After she left, my husband's friend commented that he can't believe we're still friends after the bachelor party. When I asked my husband what his friend meant, he refused to comment and we got into a huge fight over it. When he told me Rebecca had been the stripper at his party, at his bachelor party. I texted Rebecca in that moment that I don't want her around anymore, but she hasn't responded in a week. I feel betrayed by both of them, but I know it was just her job. I miss Rebecca a lot, but I'm so hurt and I don't know what to do. The top comment says, my big, my biggest concern is the friend's comment. I would want to know what happened. If it was me, I would ask him, her, and his friends. The fact that she hasn't responded also makes me suspect that there was more. Yeah, for real. I mean, that's just crazy. Like, how is this the first time that you're hearing about it? Like, no one knew that you guys were friends still. And now, finally, like, someone's actually saying something. Okay, I know that there's an update, so... Is it too soon to update? I confronted them both separately. They both gave me very two different stories. Two very different stories. Rebecca says that my husband got drunk, groped her, and when she refused, he pushed her and started to yell at her. Apparently, my husband and his friends believe I shouldn't be friends with her because she led them on. My husband says that they didn't sleep together, but Rebecca tried to initiate and performed oral while he was blackout drunk. I'm staying with my parents because I don't know who to believe here or if I should even believe either of them all i've done is argue with my husband since the confession i'm left more confused than ever and honestly i just want to say f both of them but if my husband's story is true then he's totally innocent but what if rebecca is telling the truth what if neither of them are i'm sick of them both and i haven't stopped crying since arriving at my mother's to be honest and i don't think i can why would he hide this for four years and why would she if they both believe they're fully innocent slash victims here My husband is a mean drunk, but he's always so soft-spoken, and I don't know if he can do those things Rebecca claimed. But, what? I'm confused. But I don't know how he reacts around his friends, but I've known him longer than Rebecca, too. But, why is she saying but so many times? (laughs) But, I'm all for believing women. I feel like by agreeing with my husband, I'm denying Rebecca's story or side. Okay. So, there's a little bit to unpack here, and first of all, what I'm going to say is I don't think that when I get engaged, my boyfriend is just, I don't think he's allowed to have a bachelor party, because with the stories that we've read so far um, during this, you know, I think, 
I don't remember what episode what it, what it was, but the other Bachelor story. I just don't think that Bachelor parties ever end in a good way. Like, that's just crazy. Why is that a thing? Why is it always the Bachelor party? Something happens. Like, something relationship ruining happens are these men okay like give me you know give me a thumbs up like are you okay mentally are you all there because why is this so common why are you what i'm genuinely speechless because it makes no sense you're about to get married What makes you think that you need to, one, hire a stripper, two, go to a strip club? Like, sorry, in my opinion, I don't like that. Like, it's disgusting that you are, and no no hate, no shame to any strippers out there, but I just think it's disgusting that men go to a club to watch girls shake their booty ass shake their titties and like get off on it like I just don't like that when they are in relationships especially it's just like ew I don't like it don't no it's not attractive it's honestly very unattractive to me when a guy is like so um such a womanizer Ew, I hate womanizer men. Barf in my mouth, like seriously. Ugh. I just don't, I think maybe just, I don't know. I feel like your husband has all the reason to lie because he obviously doesn't want to lose you. But Rebecca, like, I'm sure she doesn't want to lose you as a friend, but I'm sure like she would live, you know, she'd be fine without you it's different when it's like you are getting divorced or your your friendship is breaking up divorce is a lot bigger of a deal and definitely a lot more reason to lie and make up a story so I'm just gonna say also men are just kind of like this and it's not that hard to believe that if you're saying he's a mean drunk i I'm sure, like, that lines up with her story, saying that your husband got drunk, groped her, and when she refused, he pushed her and started to yell at her, and you're saying he's a mean drunk, but you're saying he's soft-spoken? What do you mean? He's a mean drunk, but he's soft-spoken? Come on. He's just a mean drunk, and you're trying to make excuses for him. I think I would believe Rebecca, honestly, because, I mean... It is screwed up that she didn't tell you. Like, she should have told you right when it happened. Hello? Before she got married, you should have told her. Because now she has to go through a divorce. But right now, I'm on a train of... I do not like men. And if you're a man watching this, honestly... If you're a straight man, just exit out. Because I'm just, like, mad at you right now. For real. I'm so over these stories about these men, like, doing this. It just makes me believe that they're all this disgusting. And I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm disappointed in you all. Okay, last update. (sighs) This will be the last update. I'd like to say thanks to everyone commenting. I realize I don't care anymore. I have done nothing but think about my husband throughout our marriage. My entire life has revolved around him. All my thoughts revolved around him. And I finally realized I've been the only one keeping this marriage going. I've been relying on him and forgiving him for such a lot of bullshit because I don't have anyone else. I gave him everything and that's not happening anymore. The truth is coming out. The truth is coming out. Thank you. Maybe finding out about Rebecca just sped things up. Maybe I relied too heavily on my husband. I told him this morning that it's over. He has yet to stop texting me, begging me for a chance. I texted Rebecca and I told her I no longer want her in my life either. Both have confessed to sleeping together and continuing to do so. My husband out of anger to insult me and maybe Rebecca wanted a last F you. 
Rebecca's baby is my husband's? What? Wait, this is... Why are you being calm about this girl? Rebecca's baby is my husband's, so to say F you back, I messaged her partner to let him know. I'm devastated, obviously, but now we have to make plans about what's happening with the house slash custody, and I can't afford to continue to cry about it. Rebecca's partner let me know at 6 p.m. that she has moved. He helped her move all of her stuff into my husband's house. What? What? It's all happened so fast, and I can't believe I was so oblivious to it. Maybe I wanted to be. Once again, thanks for all the comments and messages. It's really made me open my eyes. It's all happened so fast that I don't have time to process it at all. Looks like they wanted me to find out before she gave birth. A nice, happy family now. <laughs> I'm shookity, 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 wookity. I am shookity, wookity. Okay. This comment says, good for you for standing up for yourself. A few things to keep in mind. One, that is also your house. He has no right to evict you. He cannot by law kick you out. Two, get a lawyer ASAP. Your husband will try to manipulate and guilt you into doing what he wants and to believe his lies. Find a shark. Three, screenshot and record everything they say. Get proof of both of their emotional abuse to help you get custody. Make sure, four, make sure you have all of yours and your children's important documents Passports, birth certificates, SSNs, etc. Five, freeze your credit. Six, talk to the lawyer about whether it's best to stay in the house as long as you're safe or not. In some places, by leaving, it helps your ex gain the house. Seven, get a counselor to help cope with the above. You can do this. You are strong enough. However, your husband is going to be terrible through this. A therapist will help you cope and see through his abuse and lies. Eight, see if the children can stay with you and keep them safe. Nine, file for child support before Rebecca can. That way, you should get more. Lawyer can help with this. Okay. I'm so confused. Why was your husband begging for you back if he's been screwing this woman the whole time and she's pregnant with his baby? Is this real? Because this is the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like, what? I'm actually so... I'm so shook. Jesus. That was just the craziest plot twist of the century. I was not expecting that. I was expecting that, like, that happened four years ago. Whatever. Rebecca was telling the truth. The husband was making up a little fib. And then that's that. Maybe they go to, like, marriage counseling or something. But that what i was not expecting that i am so confused oh my god girl okay i mean i probably wouldn't want to stay in that house but yeah you should probably ask a lawyer about that because you should not be living with your parents if that is your house too which that is your house too i mean imagine the awkwardness of having to live with him and rebecca Ooh, i would sleep with one eye open but maybe like your brother-in-law or whatever who helped him wait was that the different story (laughs) Maybe someone in your family can stay with you. But I am just literally dumbfounded right now. I can't believe. Now I just. Ugh. Ugh. Throwing up all over you. The men. Species. I can't do it. I can't stop yawning. Alright. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she's not entitled to my inheritance? 
My 29 female sister, Hannah, 26 female, and I recently lost our mother after a long battle with cancer. It's been an emotional roller coaster, and we've been trying to support each other through the grief. However, the topic of inheritance has started to cause tension between us. Mom had a will that left the family home and a significant amount of money to me. Hannah received a smaller inheritance, including some sentimental items and a smaller sum of money. The reason for this, as explained, as explained by my mother in her will, is that I have been her primary caregiver for the past five years, while Hannah has been living with her lo- living her life in another city, rarely visiting or helping out. When the will was read, Hannah was visibly upset. She confronted me afterwards, saying it's unfair that I got more and she feels entitled to half of everything. I explained to her that mom had made her decisions based on the care that I provided and the sacrifices that I made, including putting my career on hold and moving back home to take care of her. Hannah argued that I was being selfish and that mom was unfairly biased towards me. She believes that as siblings, we should split everything equally. Regardless of the circumstances, she has been calling me names and involving her other family members who have mixed opinions on the matter. Some relatives think I should honor Hannah's request for the sake of family harmony, while others agree that mom's wishes should be respected. I'm torn because I want to keep the peace, but I also feel that I deserve what mom left me, considering the years of dedication and the financial impact it had on my life. Am I the asshole for telling my sister she's... Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know what these family members are saying, but for the sake of family harmony, it's not your fault. Maybe Hannah should stop requesting this for the sake of family harmony because sorry that your mom left you more money because you took care of her for five years. Like, that's a lot. That is a lot, especially on a child, not a child, but like her, the mom's child. I mean, that's just a lot mentally, physically, physically emotionally that that's all a lot financially like you're putting your life on hold and you're missing out on a lot so that you can take care of your mom you deserve every last bit of what she left you and she obviously thinks that too and to honor her you should 100% be doing whatever she put in her will because that is honoring her And she didn't leave the other girl more because she didn't want to. So why would you go against what your mom wants just because she's dead and can't fight for it? Okay, here's an edit. Thanks for all the responses and support on my last post. I wanted to provide an update on the situation with my sister, Hannah. After reading through the advice and comments, I decided to sit down with Hannah to try and have a calm conversation about the inheritance. I hoped that by explaining my perspective again, we might be able to find some common ground or at least come to an understanding. Unfortunately, the conversation did not go as I had hoped. As soon as I brought up the topic, Hannah became extremely defensive and hostile. She accused me of manipulating mom into leaving me more and said that I had always been the favorite. She demanded that I give her half of everything immediately or she would take legal action to contest the will. Okay, go ahead, girl. I tried to stay calm and explain that mom's will reflected her appreciation for the care I provided and the sacrifices I made. I even suggested that we could find a compromise where I would give her a larger share of the cash inheritance that mom had allocated. However, Hannah dismissed this offer outright, calling it crumbs and insisting she deserved half of everything, including the family home. She is this bitch for real. She has also continued to involve other family members, spreading her narrative that I'm being greedy and selfish. Some relatives have reached out to me expressing their disappointment and urging me to give in for her demands for the sake of family harmony. Ew. Bye. Others have been supportive, agreeing that mom's wishes should be respected. The situation has become increasingly stressful and toxic. Hannah has even started threatening to go public with our family issues on social media, which feels like a betrayal of our private matters. I'm trying to stay strong and stick to what I believe is right, but it's hard when she's creating so much turmoil and dragging our family through the mud. At this point, I feel like I have no choice but to stand firm and honor mom's wishes. I've consulted with a lawyer to ensure that everything is legally sound, and I'm prepared I'm prepared to defend mom's decision if Hannah follows through with her threats. It's heartbreaking that things have to come to this, especially when we should be supporting each other through grief. I never want to escalate this far, but I can't give in to Hannah's unreasonable demands. Thank you again for all the advice and support. It's been a tough journey, but knowing that others understand my perspective has been incredibly helpful. 
your family is toxic hannah is toxic why is she thinking about this so much like i deserve this you should be crying about your mom sorry girl you're so greedy and you're selfish for making this a thing like i'm actually mad about that okay wait what there's no update yet but well i guess that was kind of the update the edit okay oh my god the top comment says not the asshole finally reading a post where the parent actually shows how much they appreciate the person that was there for them i agree that your mom's wishes should be respected why should you be the only one responsible for the sake of family harmony? Your sister is just as responsible for it. She is the one starting a fight with you over your mother's wishes and expecting you to go against them. Exactly what I said. Your sister is the one that is making the family lose harmony. So why are you responsible to just giving in? Oh, here you go. Like a little child. Here you go. Like, here's your little pacifier. No, you can calm down no she's obviously showing her true colors like what kind of sister and daughter does this why would she want to i understand like okay yeah that kind of sucks like damn i was first of all you weren't there for your mom like that let that sink in you know and second of all she saw that she saw that this other sister was doing so much and she appreciated it so much that she left her more of the money i understand that it sucks that you don't get as much money but you literally didn't do anything to help her so why do you think you're deserving of anything for that matter you're lucky that she left you anything and you should be grateful for anything your sister literally put her whole life on hold okay someone commented back to the top i'm gonna read the comments of the top comment tell my <laughs> am i okay <laughs> the comments back to the top comment okay not the asshole if your sister wants to share evenly she should have shared the sacrifice of caring for your mom equally too exactly and please tell the relatives that are chiming in since they feel so strongly about it they are more than welcome to open their wallets and give your sister money to make up the disparity in your inheritance your sister didn't care enough to respect your mom's wishes when she was alive or now that she's gone and i'm very sorry for your loss so it may be best for you to go no contact with her and the flying monkeys take this time to grieve heal and make a new path for yourself yes because the sister will go no contact when she grabs half the inheritance she's not entitled to even if she doesn't don't do it for peace you did the time and you deserve it exactly all those relatives with opinions are free to leave their money to the sister if they feel she was treated so unfairly amen op not the asshole of course and don't give an inch I could have written this post. I have two sisters that did the greedy grabbing thing and even retained a lawyer. They ran up a $50,000 bill with the attorney trying to take a piece of real estate willed to me that was appraised at $23,500. Death makes people do weird things. Exactly. My sibling waged a three-year smear campaign behind my back in order to take everything she wanted from her parents' estate and have the backing of the entire family since they now... All believed I was an asshole thanks to her smear campaign. When it was all over and she had said what she wanted, she v or she had what she wanted, she very kindly forgave me. Greed does do strange things to people. That's just crazy. OP is either a troll or sick in the head. She made an am I the asshole for sucking my newborn's... <gasps> what? I'm confused. Or sick in the head. She made an I am I the asshole for sucking my newborns blank. The post has been deleted, but the comments are still there. Someone said post the link or screenshot because there isn't such a comment on their profile. WTF, I wrote a comment on this post, but just deleted it. OP, what the F is wrong with you? OP said, I have not and never deleted a post on here. Don't be overdramatic. You're talking like you're 12. Or I'm talking to a survivor of 
child sexual assault. Maybe just report the person's comment. That's what I plan to do. Your mother made her plan when she was of sound mo- mind and body. Her wishes should be carried out. I'm sorry that she came to realize that your sister is an asshole. Be proud of the care you gave her. My condolences. What? Yes, you did. You can still see your comments on your profile, you absolute moron. Oh my god, I'm sorry, but if that's true, I'm scared. (gasps) Not the power being weird in my apartment today. I can't, like, don't be flickering. Ghost? Hello? Please stop messing with the lights. I literally am not doing anything. I'm just trying to film. I'm scared. Okay. Well, that was a really weird ending to that. Like, I'm kind of uncomfortable. I don't like that. I hope that never happened. Okay, but anyways, I feel weird and uncomfortable. (laughs) And that is all the stories for today. Um, that is the weirdest way to end it. Don't like it at all. So sorry for that. I'm mad and I hope that she actually didn't leave any type of post like that because that's insane and I'm scared. But anyways, um, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. I actually really need a drink of water though. Like For some reason, my throat starts to close after talking too much. (sighs) Maybe it's God's way of telling me that I need to shut the fuck up. But, um, like and comment, please. Love you so much. Um, love chatting with you. I say this every single episode and I'm going to keep saying it every single episode until it's cemented into your brain that I love it. I love talking to you guys and talking about these stories. Um, Again, my Reddit is linked below for anyone that has a story to share or even if they know of a story of someone else's story or whatever. Just share some stories. That would be fun and really amazing. And also, even if you don't have a story, you should join the subreddit. And become a subreddit member of the Storytime Society. Because we want you in there as soon as possible. And share this with a friend or something if they like story times or they get bored or something. If they like to listen to things like this. I love to listen to things like this and I'm listening to like podcasts and just random stuff all day long because it makes me feel like I have like company and I love that I feel like it's nice because then especially if you work from home which I do then you don't feel so alone you know it makes you feel so much better when you just like have something to listen to and it's almost like you are hanging out with a friend and I you are hanging out with a friend hi I'm your friend it's me um but yeah love you guys and I really hope that you enjoyed this episode Let me know what you think about the stories. I think that's all I have to say. Goodbye. My foot is so numb right now. My toe is literally numb. It's about to fall off. I need both.